In Tableau 2020.1, Tableau have added the ability to add animated mark transitions. Now, this is a really important feature because it fundamentally changes the way in which authors need to think about how interactivity works on their dashboards. In order to show you the range of options, let's just jump straight into Tableau. You'll see in this workbook, I have three sheets. The first one is a bar graph. The second is a simple line chart showing sales uh, over time. And the last one is a scatter plot. And what I want to do is show you the different behaviors that you get when you enable animations. Now, I'm just gonna simply change the sort on this. And you can see that this is the standard behavior that we've been used to up until the latest version of Tableau. You just get this almost instant behavior when you sort or when you change the ordering on any particular dashboard. If I uh, bring in the filtering capability here on the right-hand side and I remove something, you'll see that it instantly appears and disappears, okay? And if we enable those back in, they come back in almost instantaneously. Now, to, in order to enable mark transitions, you just need to go over to the format tab at the very top and then down to animations. And when you click on that, it opens up a pane here on the left-hand side. Now, you can see here that on this particular workbook, the default is off, but certain charts will have a different default. So just bear in mind that you check that behavior if you want to make sure that these are either on or off. I'm gonna switch them on across the entire workbook. And now I'm gonna go back to the sorting capability you saw me do earlier on. And now notice that as I do this, the behavior changes. There's now an animation that's applied to this effect. It's a very nice addition and it makes this slightly smoother and sort of nicer aesthetic to your charts if you're visualizing or interacting with them. To go deeper into the settings, you can change the duration of a particular animation. You can set it to one second, but notice this adds a little bit of lag to the interactivity. So if you set it to something like two seconds, just be aware that your users might not be comfortable waiting too long for something they used to get almost instantaneously. The last thing to bear in mind is you can also set a custom duration here. So if I set this to 10 seconds, you might actually have instances where maybe you want to narrate something and this would be a perfect transition sort of duration because what you can do is you can narrate a discussion or a particular point whilst it's animating in the background. And that just allows you to have sort of slightly better interaction with your audience. And you can see that happening here in very, very, very slow motion. Now, the last thing to bear in mind is the style of the animation that you've got here. I'm gonna set this back to 30 seconds, maybe actually one second so you can just see this a little bit better emphasized. And if I just filter out art, for example, you'll see here that everything happens simultaneously. Um, the item is removed and then uh, all the remaining subcategories sort of move up to fill the space. If I set it to a little bit uh, slower here and we do the same thing for, let's go for chairs here in the middle. Let's just do that, let's remove that. You'll see that a bunch of different animations happen all at the same time. They, they all sort of start at the same time. That's the key meaning of this style simultaneous. If I change this to sequential, what Tableau will do is it will do each of those behaviors one after the other. So let me add chairs back in. It will first add chairs back into the mix and then it will animate that back into the mix. So you get this sort of slightly staggered behavior. And again, this allows you to uh, maybe uh, emphasize a particular point or emphasize a particular behavior. But fundamentally, you just gotta be aware of these sort of subtleties because they can actually help the way you um, talk about your visualization to others if you're maybe showing your visualization. I still think if you're using a dashboard in its traditional sense, you're probably gonna have these set to the faster setting and you're probably gonna try and minimize sort of uh, too much animation on the page because you know some people suffer from motion sickness and so you don't want this to become some sort of all singing and dancing sort of circus show. So really think wisely about your selections when you use animations. The other thing to bear in mind is you can actually set sheet specific animation defaults. So you can see here, all the defaults that I was working with before were across the entire workbook. That's sort of signified here at the top uh, by this section, but I can actually change the behavior just for this particular worksheet. Uh, I can even switch it off and I can set a slightly different style on this particular worksheet in order to bring it together in a dashboard. Now let's switch over to this chart here where we have dates. 
I'm showing dates uh, and sales, uh, dates on columns and on rows I've got sales and I'm basically just showing sales over time. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring in the filter option again and I'm going to leave everything as it is and we're gonna to go to the format option and enable animations once again on this particular sheet. You can see it's set to one second. If I filter out art, you can see the line animates. But in this particular case, notice that it's slightly harder to see because all that seems to happen is that the axis moves up and down, but the general shape of the data remains broadly the same. If we take out a slightly bigger category like chairs, you can see this actually starts to happen a little bit um, more, but fundamentally, because the only thing that I'm taking out isn't actually sort of meaningfully changing the values in each year, I'm actually not noticing any change here. So you have to bear in mind that whatever you select needs to animate in a way that means that there's a meaningful difference when someone looks at it on the screen, other than just the axis changing, because otherwise it's really difficult to see how the patterns and so on are changing. If I change this to be colored by category, you can see now that that difference is much, much more pronounced. So you can see here, I've got the three different lines. And by bringing in that option, you could see that line was animated in and then back out again, okay? Now, if I remove a particular item, let's say for chairs, which should affect the blue line, you can see that that line drops down. If I add that back in, it drops back to where it was. Now, if I add a uh, uh, sort of more detail to this by taking out the quarters. Let's bring this to a continuous year and then let's add uh, sort of more context to this. Now, as we filter out items, you'll see that this chart animates in a much, much more interesting way. And this animation starts to tell a story about where things are coming from and where they're heading. And then what's happening in between those particular stages. That's the key thing here. You're helping people notice there's some sort of journey between one point and another point. That's the whole point of animations. If I go to a scatter plot in this particular case, you can see here that I've got a simple date filter here across the top um, on the right hand side. And what you'll see here is as I change these dates, you'll see these bubbles sort of uh, change positions and change how they work. But here, I haven't actually set animations. So let's go back in, uh, let's go to format, animations, and let's make sure this is on by default. And the key thing I wanna make sure here is that I actually change this filter in a way that allows someone to sort of notice what's going on. And you can see here now because the change is is sort of bigger and more accentuated, you can actually see where the circles are coming from and where they're going to. And so what you can actually start to do here is you can actually start to animate this in a sort of a very, very interesting way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna do something slightly different, which is I'm gonna change this order date here to the week number. I'm gonna just click okay on that. And then I'm gonna drag that up to the page itself, okay? What this allows me to do is sort of step through each of the different weeks. And you can see here that it's animating the change. However, what I'm trying to do is recreate that sort of uh, effect that you saw in Hans Rosling's sort of demonstration of um, sort of world economic indicators. And so in order to do this, I actually need to set these values to become running totals. So let's set this to a running total. And I need to make sure that this is computing using the order date. I wanted to add up the cells over time. So I need to, I need to make sure that it's using uh, the running total and then it's using order date as the computation. And I need to do that also with this uh, item here, which shows the sum of cells over time as a size. Uh, again, do the running total. And I need to make sure that we set that to order date. And again, on this aggregation ratio, uh, because I want this effect to be consistent over time, I need to make sure that I'm doing this consistently across all the values. So now you can see here that all the items um, here on the very first week um, start out tiny, okay? And I'm going to animate this very, very quickly. I'm gonna hit start now, but what I'll do is I'll stop talking and you'll actually see this animate through time and I'll speed it up so you can see the net effect that you'd get if you maybe record this as a video or if you were to handle it as a narration.
So you can see how this effect works and it's a really, really handy feature. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that you've got to be careful what animation choices you've used. I've already mentioned this, but also you have to bear in mind that if you're relying on animations, you have to bear in mind that the user might not actually see those animations. The individual user on Tableau server gets the ability to switch off animations in their own account settings. Let me just show you that interface now. So I'm here on Tableau Online, but a Tableau server uh, instance would have a very similar sort of interface. And over in the top right hand side, I can go to my own account settings and that opens this particular window that you see here. And at the very, very bottom, you'll see here that this um, animation settings is over here. And actually as a user, I can on bulk and disable that. And when I hit those changes, it it doesn't matter if you as an author have enabled animations, that specific user won't see those animations. So don't rely on those features um, if you're building a dashboard just yet, because not everyone will see those uh, changes if they have this particular setting enabled. So the second thing is that Tableau server admins themselves don't currently understand the impact of animations on their Tableau server. And so they may also disable animations across the entire Tableau server until they have a better handle on what performance impact that might have. So those are just two words of cautions. Now that said, I want to point you to two bits of awesome content uh, created by the Tableau community. In this particular case, uh, Mark Reed has done an absolutely brilliant job summarizing the new features in Tableau in a lot more detail than I've gone into in this video. It's a really sort of good historical journey of where animations can really add value. He mentions the example that Hans Rosling is most famously sort of known for, but he also talks a bit about how that implementation works in Tableau. And to finish, the piece off he's got his very own uh, video here which you can watch on his channel i'll put a link in the description below but i'll also um put it um in the information tip that's coming across the screen now he's actually simulated the hands Rosling example in a Tableau workbook with some very, very nice uh, actions enabled as well. So you can really start to see how this uh, really starts to come to life in Tableau. Um, it's a feature that's never really been possible before, but if you put together the right sort of uh, story and background, then um, everything starts to fall into place. If you've enjoyed this video, hit like. If not, drop us a comment below and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future.